You know what I like about cabinet making? Two things. It forces you to come up with ways to cut something that can be easily ruined. And the second thing is you have to come up with ways to fix something that you can't patch. As in you have to screw something together without filling screw holes. I mean I've only been doing it for two days so you know take that with a grain of salt. So I've got to make another cabinet the same size as this one. This one, uh, because it's got the sink in it, it doesn't have a middle partition. Which, uh, I want a middle partition. It'll be stronger that way. But there's another cabinet the same size as that one, right next to it, where I can put a middle partition. So if you look at this one, these go to the top of the rails. So this middle partition has to go to the top of the rails as well, which means we need to do a checkout. Well, that worked pretty successfully. The router bit that I use is kind of five mil wide cylinder. Um, if there's a better one for cutting, please comment below. I'd love to know. I've seen ones that look more like a drill bit. There we go. So yeah, I'm taking an extra effort to uh, not trip up any of these edges and get clean cuts on the front because this is all going to be seen. We're doing exposed plywood edges. Let's try and finish these edges there. Eh? Let's see how it goes. So there it is there. The issue is it's going to show when you look at it like that. You know, that's going to be a dark grey and then you're going to have this light blonde wood colour. Let's dial it back a bit. Alright, well I hope you can see that. I'm really happy with that. Dialing it back a bit gives it a nice soft edge. Feels way better and it's not showing too much of the timber when you look at it from this angle. So I think what we have here is a win-win. Let's do it on all the cabinets. do one experimental thing. That experimental thing is to do with these holes. There's heaps of these gaps in the edge of the plywood. Some are worse than others and some aren't so bad. Either way we need to fill them. This is one of the oldest tricks in the book. Use the sawdust and use the glue Getting the sawdust straight from the vacuum. It's not perfect because there's probably a bit of white in there as well, but it'll be fine. Sometimes I like to think that a builder was doing this one day, and that's how they came up with MDF. Who knows? So you want a sort of bog consistency? Like that. Alright, 
this glue and sawdust has dried up nicely. I'm stoked. It came out really good. I mean, this is everywhere is looking like this. Milwaukee sent me some laser levels. Far more than I need. Um, this one is a USB. Now this one is probably the one I'm going to use. This one's the 12 volt. So yeah, they were kind enough to um, give me these. Let's uh, see if this will help us get a level line on the wall. Right. Well, it's locked. Do I go like that? That's level. Yeah, let's get a mark. I love when they include this in a tripod. Little windy handle, so you can bring it up to your mark. You sit the level on the tripod like close enough and then slowly bring it up to your mark. And this will illustrate why you don't actually need a laser level. I'm getting my level out anyway to put a straight line. But if you're working professionally, um, you want anything that'll make your job quicker. As is to be expected, this concrete floor is all wonky. It's kind of dipping down that way towards where, I don't know if you remember, but the wall used to come out here. I built this new wall here. And going this way, it seems to be actually falling this way. Yeah, so it's falling this way and that way, but it doesn't matter because we've got adjustable legs on the cabinets. So that's it tight. So, unscrew it a couple of times, done that with all of them, yep, and now I've got a bit of movement, Let's see how we go. Yeah. Pretty close on this side, then as you go over to this corner, well, we've dropped down a heck of a lot. Oh yeah, had to be that. So this is the HPL. HPR was what we were using for all the doors. High pressure laminate is what it stands for. And already with this one cut that I've done, I can tell that it is a much better quality. So no filling necessary on this one. Just give it a quick sand. Uh, 
All right, I just found a use for two levels. A, a justification for having two levels. I need a line here, but I also need that horizontal line that I was using over there. Here we go. All right, so I need to move that over a little bit. Now I should have used the bigger Milwaukee for this line because it has this micro adjusting function. See this here? You go like that and it pivots. So that lets you adjust your line without having to pick the level up and shuffle it around. So it'd be good for this line, but hey, I've already got it set up. I must have got this wall straight because both of those blocks were the exact same thickness. You've got to give yourself pats on the back when you're doing stuff that you don't know how to do. Now before I jump up and do those top cabinets, I've got to strengthen this up here. Because if you notice, there's no middle partition on this cabinet. You know, like that one. And like I said earlier, that's because of the sink. Sink's gonna go there, I need all the space for the sink. So I'm gonna do something else to beef it up. Those blocks up there are all dead flat and plumb. So when I put the cabinets up there, I'm just pushing hard against something that's absolutely perfect. The wall's really straight, but um, plasterboard, you know, things move in and out. Now I'm gonna set this level up. This is a big bad 12 volt level. I'm gonna set it up so it can cast a line and do the horizontal. I've just gotta put it in a correct position. All right, we've got the horizontal good, the vertical not so good. Turn that, and it moves, it moves the laser right or left. Apparently a lot of the, uh, a lot of the lasers are selling that now. It's a good function. This isn't good for my eyes. Now in an effort to uh, do this on my own, I have some assistance. This is uh, highly experimental, don't know if it's going to work. So that shouldn't be a reason not to try it, right?
while since I've done something like that. <laughs> I was holding the battery like that and drilling like that and then it got caught and boom, slammed my hand between the battery and the cabinet. Be careful with high power drills, especially when you're doing a hole source. <laughs> 